Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He is our worship. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Is he your worship tonight? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As Pastor Norma says, I, amen, I love to worship God. Amen. And I like believe in making noise. Amen. The Bible says, well, make a joyful Praise noise unto the Lord, Lord. all ye lands. Amen. amen. Praise be to God. Then it says, well, clap your hands, all ye people, and amen. shout unto God. Yes. With a voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't you clap your hands tonight? Come on. Clap your hands tonight. Glory be to God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you are our worship tonight. You are the reason why we're here tonight, oh God. You are the reason, oh God, why we can stand, oh God. Hallelujah in this building, Lord, and just worship you, God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank you because you don't dwell in buildings made of man's hands, oh God, but you dwell within us, Lord. We are the temples of the Most High God. You have chosen to take up residence within us, Lord, and we are grateful for that tonight, Lord. Glory be to God. We have been changed. We have been regenerated, oh God. God, we have been made anew, Lord God. Oh, we are new creations within you tonight, Lord. So we can worship you. We can be glory. We can glory in you. Hallelujah. We can give glory to the name of Jesus for all that he has done. You are worthy. Oh, glory be to God. God, we must praise you. Because if we don't, the very rocks will cry out among us, oh God. So we must worship you. We must give you praise. We must honor you. We must glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless your word tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray that the word would go forth. God, under the anointing, oh God. Oh God, no other way but God, I would under the very anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord. God, thank you for your word, which is a lamp yes, unto our feet yes. and a light unto our path. Oh. The word of God that is quick and powerful oh. and sharper than any twisted sword, oh God. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Father, we thank you tonight. Yes. We bless you. We magnify you. We rejoice in you. Our hearts are indicted in a good matter tonight, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. Because of you, Lord, and, and who you are tonight. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Praise be to God. You have a praise tonight? Amen. Do you have a bless the Lord within you tonight? Amen. Glory Hallelujah. be to God. Do you have a bless the Lord within you tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Glory Hallelujah. be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, I just want to honor God tonight. Amen. Amen. Honor uh, Pastors Norman, Neil, and, and for their service and for their time of, of sacrifice yes. and all the things that they've given to our Father's heart, amen, and amen. for the 15 years amen. of the existence of this ministry, amen. Amen. This is a, 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 a blessed place to be, Hallelujah. amen. We know that the presence of God is in this place, Hallelujah. amen, and every time we come in, amen. the presence of God is here. Hallelujah. Heal the Spirit of the Lord. We can, yes. from the Word of God, the Word of God that's preached, that's ministered to yes. us, yes. amen. Amen. It, it, we know that the presence of God is in this place. So I want to honor them. I want to thank God for uh, the work that they have done. Also want to uh, honor my wife of 35 years. Praise God. Amen. God has blessed us with 35 years of marriage. I thank God for her and, 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 and just the blessing that she has been. Yeah. Amen. To, to my life and, and, and to, to our family. Um, she's the life and light of our family, to be honest. I'm, I'm just there, to be honest, just <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I just thank God for her and <clears throat> for all that uh, she has meant mm. to me over these 35 years. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. I want to share 
<clears throat> I want to share with you tonight from the book of Psalms, chapter 27. My text is Psalm 27, and my subject is Psalm 27. Praise, Praise be to God. <laughs> this is my probably one of my favorite passages of scriptures Indeed. in the Bible. Um, I, I think one of the, well, besides of what, what's involved in it and what's what's enclosed in this psalm, in this psalm, I was born on March 27th, and so I was kind of drawn to this. In fact, I, from when I was younger, I remember my mother reading this, um, and, and uh, so I was exposed to it at a, pr a pretty young age. But this has meant a lot to me throughout my throughout my life Amen. as a Christian, and I just want to share some things that God has laid in my heart. From Psalm 27. <clears throat> this psalm can be divided into three distinct parts or sections. In part one, which is essentially found in verses one through six, then you have the second part, the second section in verses seven through twelve. Yes. And then the third part is found in verses 13 and 14. In parts 1, verses 1 through 6, yeah. David expresses his confidence mm -hmm. in God. Mm -hmm. He expresses a commitment yes. to Amen. seek the face of the Lord. It shows here his sweet, sweet communion that he, had, that he had with God. Here, David was sure of God's protection in his life. Amen. He knew that in his day of trouble... That God would shelter him. Amen. Let's look at uh, verses 1 through 6. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear or dread? And I'm reading from the Amplified. The Lord is the refuge and stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled yeah. and fell. Hallelujah. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, e even in this will I be confident. Mm -hmm. That one thing have I asked or desired of the Lord that will I seek, inquire for, and insistently require that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. No, to behold you. and gaze upon the beauty, mm -hmm. the sweet attractiveness, and the delightful loveliness of the Lord. And to meditate. Consider and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble or in the day of trouble, he will hide me in his shelter. Mm -hmm. In the secret place of his tent will he hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. In his tent I will offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises mm -hmm. to the Lord. So Amen. what we were doing a while ago was right in line with the word of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. What does it mean when it says, the Bible says that he is our light? The Lord is my light and my salvation. The word light means illumination. Amen. We know that the sun gives light. And when this passage of scripture was written, there were two sources of light. There was the sun and they also used lanterns. They didn't have the fancy lights that we have today that uh, blinded me a little bit. Now. <laughs> but um, there were two sources of light. The sun gives light. It gives warmth. Yeah. It also gives life and yeah. highlights beauty. Yeah. We, <clears throat> we realize that the light was the first thing that God created. Mm -hmm. In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, God said, let there be light. Be light. Yeah. And he, David also said, the Lord is my salvation. Mm -hmm. The word salvation means deliverance. Yeah. It means preservation. Amen. Then he says, whom? Shall I fear? Light and salvation are contrasted with fear. And we know the antidote to fear in our society today is are things like security, locks, guns, alarm systems. In God's kingdom, however, the, the antidote or the fix for fear is the Lord, Amen. is my light. Yes. Amen. The Lord yes. is my light. Yes. And David goes on to say in, 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 the, in the following verses, he, he begins to <clears throat> share how he had a beautiful time in the presence of God and how his desire was to seek after the
the face of God. You see, David, in verses 1 through 6, David was on a spiritual high. Yes, amen. He spent time in the presence of God. He loved to be in the presence of God. He knew what it was for God to protect him and watch over him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He knew what it was for God <clears throat> to be his shelter. David said in verse 5, For in the day of trouble, he will hide me. Yes. As King James says, he will hide me in his pavilion. Yes, yes. That seems a little bit more intimate than the word shelter that the Amplified uses. In the secret of his tabernacle will he hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. Hallelujah. And now shall my head be lifted up yes. above my enemies. Amen. Amen. Therefore will I offer sacrifices of joy and praises. So verses 1 through 6 shows intimacy, a closeness with God. Yes, amen. Tremendous experience that David had in serving God and following God. But however, in verses 7 through 12, the tone changes. Something shifts. There was a change yeah. in David's attitude and, so, and, and the things that he said. He went from having confidence in God. He went from seeking the face of the Lord, from making the declaration, the Lord is my light and my salvation. If you look at verse 9, it says, David says, hide not your face from me, O God. Amen. Turn not your servant away in anger. Mm -hmm. You have been my help. Cast me not off, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Verse 12, he says, Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, mm -hmm. for false witnesses have risen up against me. Amen. They breathe out cruelty Amen. and violence. Mm -hmm. In these verses, we see that David was confronted mm -hmm. with advers adversity, yes. with opposition, mm -hmm. with difficulty. It moves from the tone that was set in verses 1 through 6 to what we see in verses 7 through 12. There was trouble. There was a problem. No longer... Instead of, uh, of him having that confidence in God, instead of him uh, showing that closeness with God, he was crying out to God, yes, God, amen. something is happening here. Mm -hmm. There's trouble. There's a problem. Amen. I have people who are, who are against me. Yes. Amen. I have adversaries. Amen. It's not as uh, peaceful as it used to be in amen. verses 1 through 6. Verses 7 through 12, there is a shift. Yes. There is a change. In, in what we see in, 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 in the psalm. And then in the, the third part of this psalm, in verses uh, 13 and 14, David essentially put both together. We see yet another change. He goes Amen. again from having confidence in God and being on a spiritual high to a period of difficulty, adversity, trouble. And in verses 13 and 14, we see it's a time of expectation. He declares that there is a time of expectation and encouragement oh, yeah. and renewed confidence and hope in God. Mm -hmm. See, in this third phase of the, of the psalm, David had learned some things about God. He had gone through some experiences mm -hmm. that he saw God in a totally different light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not only did he learn to encourage himself, which we see in, in, in verses 13, and 14, but he was able to speak now with much assurance, with much confidence. He had learned to be a source of encouragement Amen. to others. Amen. Three different phases in the life of David. Verses 1 through 6, he had that closeness with God. He had that confidence in God. Mm -hmm. Verses 7 through 12, he was experiencing some trouble, some difficulty, some adversity. Something had changed. Something had shifted in his life. And in verses 13 and 14, David came to a realization that despite my problems, despite my adversity, despite my sickness, despite my, my, my financial problems, despite my family problems, despite the problems of my job, yes. if I had not believed the goodness of God, yes. then I would have Amen. fainted. Amen. Amen. I would have given up. Yeah. I would have keeled over. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Yes. I want to use this psalm to, and align it to my own life. Mm -hmm. Because I see my life, as I look back at my life, I see three distinct periods yeah. or chapters in my own life. 
up to age 16, my life was not necessarily the best. As a young child, I lived in a family of five. I, you know, my mother, father, and I had a brother and a sister in the, on the island of Jamaica. My father was an educator. My mother was a midwife, well respected in the community. My father was also a lay preacher in the church. He we went to the Anglican church, the Episcopal church, and he was an organist, played the organ. Nobody ever taught him. He just learned on his own. Hallelujah. And he would, when the, when the regular pastor or priest wasn't there, then he would, you know, do the speaking because he was a teacher and he had a background in, you know, in the church. Then he would be, he, he would be responsible for speaking yeah. in church on Sunday. At about age 10, unfortunately, my parents went through a divorce. My family was dysfunctional. It was a bitter divorce. Because my father, was, unfortunately, was involved in an extramarital affair. I can remember, vividly remember, as a young child, how they would fight and argue. And it's funny the things that you remember. I don't remember a lot of good things. I don't remember going on vacation. I don't remember, you know, a lot having a lot of fun. I remember the bad times. I remember the times when he would hit my mother. But... And he wasn't a bad person. He was very responsible, very educated. You know, he was the school principal for, for that particular area. But and it's not that they didn't want to do better; they just didn't know how to do better. Amen. They weren't taught. They were. They didn't have, uh, you know, relationship classes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. be to God. After the divorce, my mother and my siblings and I moved to one part of the island. And why my father remarried and moved to another part. And I know things happen in life, you know, but our, our relationship, our family has never been the same. Mm -hmm. It's never. That's right. Never right. been the same. That's right. You know, my, I've never had a good relationship with my father's second family. He has two other daughters, he has a wife, and we've just never had a good relationship. Consequently, my father has never had a good relationship with us. Even though we moved from Jamaica, and we moved to uh, New York City back in the seventies, he just never had, we never had good relationships. My sister and my father never, has never, and, and, and even that it shows itself in my sister's life. She has never had good relationships with men. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, two children both out of wedlock. Today she, you know, thank God she's safe today. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. But that, that, but, and I really think that because of the relationship that she had or the lack of relationship that she had with my father. Amen. That's what caused her to be yes. the way she is today. Amen. Amen. Shortly after the divorce, my mother migrated to this country, to New York City, and left us in Jamaica to complete high school. So essentially what we did, we, we, there's a thing, thing called boarding where we live with another family. Wasn't our family, but we, we live with. We, in fact, we live with uh, one, two, three other families. As a matter of fact, um, before we actually uh, came to this country. At age sixteen, praise be to God, I gave my heart to the Lord Hallelujah. in high school, on school campus. Mm. Amen. It was totally different from yeah. from the schools that we have, and most of the schools that we have in this country where. Even mentioning the name of the Lord is, 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 is a problem. But thank God there were people, there was an organization that would go to different schools and would, there was someone that would teach about the Lord. And through that organization, through that ministry, I gave my heart to the Lord. It was during the time of the charismatic movement, the charismatic Amen. renewal yeah. in Jamaica. And, and God moved powerfully. Powerfully. I mean, when I say powerfully, I mean powerfully. We, you know, I went to an all boys high school. Most of the schools in Jamaica are not co ed. They're either all girls or all boys. And, you know, just we were young men who were aged 15, 16, 17 years of age. And the Spirit of God was upon us. We didn't know much. We didn't, you know, we didn't, we weren't Bible scholars. But the Spirit of God came up on us powerfully. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and used us, even in the school, even on the school campus, even when we were going home. At times, we would, we would ride the bus. We didn't have school buses in Jamaica. We had to take the regular bus that everybody else did. Mm -hmm. And God would just use us. People would stand up and start speaking, start preaching. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And out of that, that, that group, out of that, you know, and God did this in a lot of the schools Amen. in that area. Amen. Out of that particular group today, there's a church Amen. called Love Fellowship that still exists. Amen. That's, that's thriving and growing and, and, you know, to the honor and glory of God. Amen. That particular year that I spent in Jamaica was a year that gave me my foundation in Christianity. I didn't get saved in a church. So I've never put God in a box saying that you have to get saved in church Amen. or, Amen. You, you know, Amen. the pa pastor has. No, I got saved during recess. Mm -hmm. I lifted my, raised my hands and I, and I gave my heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and you, you see that God is, you can't put God in, in a little place and say, well, it, it has to be this way or it has to be that way. No, that's why I've always had difficulty being in churches that are dead. Yeah. Not that I've been to a lot of churches, but I can't be in a church like that. Uh, I just can't because I know what God yeah. can do. Yeah. I've seen yeah. what God can do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I have to be in a place where where God is moving, yeah. where yeah. something yeah. is happening, because I've seen it. Uh, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. After school, as a fact, let me just say this. My last year in Jamaica, I lived essentially by myself. My brother and my sister... After they finished school, they came to this country, and I was essentially by myself. I lived with a family, but I lived with a mother and a, and a daughter, but I was a very dysfunctional family. As a, a young man of age 16, 17, I was like this, the, the most, um, you know, steadfast part of that home. You know, but the, unfortunately, the, the, the mother was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And the daughter, her and the daughter would fight almost every day. You know, she was in school, but they were constantly fighting. But praise God, I was able to speak to them and, and, and share with them and try to calm things down. Amen, amen. So I was essentially by myself. But that was the year that God established me. Yes. Be began to establish me amen. in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. That's why David said in, in part of the Psalm 27, when my father and my mother forsake me, then what the Lord... Amen. Will take me. Will take me up. Hallelujah. Amen. He's concerned about each and every one of us. Praise the name of the Lord. And wherever you are, wherever we are, yes. He will reach down. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And grab us. Amen. Amen. He will. Amen. Amen. What would have happened if I hadn't given my heart to the Lord? Mm. I don't know where I would be. Sometimes I think I, I'll be dead. Mm. Mm. Or I might have gravitated to the, the, the Rastafarian religion mm. that was very prominent in Jamaica at that time. Unfortunately, my brother is a part of that. And we're still praying for him that God will deliver him from, from thinking that, you know, the former uh, emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we know that's not true. Amen. After school, after finishing school, I relocated to New York City to be with my family. Thank God. And this started, being a Christian, this started a period of tremendous blessing. Amen. In my life, as a young man, I started, I attended college in New York City. A couple of years after that, I got my first job on Wall Street, working in the investment uh, world. Praise God, I got married. We had children, started having children. Relocated, we relocated to the state of Maryland because God had placed relocation in our hearts. And we were praying and seeking God about, you know, where to go. And Maryland wasn't in our plans. We had three places in mind. We had Canada, Atlanta, well, and, and then you know Maryland after a while. And this is, we believe that this is where God led us. Amen. To the state of Maryland. God has really blessed. God, between the age, ages of 16 and, you know, 58 was phase two of my life time of tremendous blessing, a time of, of growth and, and just a great outpouring of God, you know, in my life, mm -hmm. serving God, living for God, Amen. you know, um, you know, taking time to seek the, the face of the Lord. I was just thinking it was a time in my life when the Lord led me to spend time in fasting and prayer twice a week, mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You know, just to spend time in the Lord. And, and this is while working. 
you know, I would fast for like the first part of the day. Mm -hmm. And then lunchtime, I would go to a church, Holy Trinity Church, right in the middle of Wall Street. Amen. And just seek the, you know, seek the face of the Lord. Amen. And then go back to, you know, go back to work. But there was so much. I mean, my wife can tell you. I mean, the, the tremendous blessing. God has blessed us with three children. Amen. You know, our, God has blessed our children. I mean, I, I don't have time to think all that God has done. You know, in, 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 you know, for our children. Our oldest child, Chris, he lives in New York. He, thank God he's now married. He, he works for the National Basketball Association and he travels all over the world. Mm. Amen. God has really blessed him and, and, and put him in a, a, a prominent position. Our second child, John, who's a member of Grace Assembly of God, he's a professional engineer. Just Amen. passed the exam earlier on this year. And our youngest, uh, Tiffany, she just graduated from college a couple years ago. Also lives in New York, but it's just during that phase two mm -hmm. of what I consider phase two of my life, yeah. just a time of tremendous blessing. And, and that's analogous here to what David experienced in verses one through six. Mm -hmm. But here comes phase three. In August 24th, August 24th, 2016, last year, I was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Wow. That has been tremendous time of testing and trial in my life. Amen. The first five to six months were extremely trying, have been were extremely trying, you know, for me. Then to complicate matters in December of last year, last year I was diagnosed with a nasal infection. The doctor had to place me on antibiotics for 30 days. You know, normally antibiotic treatment, I think, doc, is about 10 days. <laughs> and then to add to that, I started having difficulty sleeping. Mm. My wife can tell you, I mean, well, I'm not sure she can tell you because she'd probably be asleep, but there are times I, I found difficult, I had difficulty in falling asleep before three or four in the morning. Mm. I just stay up, I couldn't go to sleep. You know, but this, over the past year or so, it has been a time of tremendous trial and difficulty for me. Mm -hmm. But, praise be to God, I'm still standing here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And of course, I question God. Sure. Because this is a new experience. I've never experienced this before. I, I've never spent time in, in a hospital before Amen. that. Never. I mean, I was only there overnight, but that was the first time I'd ever been in a hospital for overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, life was just, as I said, phase two of my life was just tremendous. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I was just kept going and going and going. This stopped me in my tracks. Mm -hmm. Then I started to think about the future. Never thought about death. Mm -hmm. Until then, to be frank, I always thought, eh, you know, my mother is 90 years of age. I have an aunt who lived, she was 93. My grandfather died at age 88. My father died at age 83. I'll, I'll worry about it down the road amen, somewhere. Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise the name of the Lord. But, you know, God is so good. Yes, he is. Amen. God is so good. Praise be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. In February of this, and of course, you know, this caused me to seek God and, and, and to reach out to the Lord and to, you yes. know, do, do some things that I've never done before. You know, I find myself sometimes coming home from work and I'll be crying, mm -hmm. you know, in my car saying, God, why? What, what is this? What have you, why, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why me? That's what we say most of the time. Why me? Why me? You know, why, why did that? I don't think I deserve this. Amen. But God is still good. Yes, he is. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Praise be to God. Amen. He's, he's, he's a great God. Amen. He loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. And he has our lives in his hands. Yes, Amen. Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. Nothing can happen to us unless God allows it right. to happen. Right. Believe that. Nothing can happen to us unless God allows it to happen. 
Amen. He holds us yes, he does. in the palm of his hand. Oh, I think it's Isaiah 49 and 16 that says he, he, we are engraved in the palm of his hands. We are engraved in the palm of his hands. Amen. His love for us is incredible. His love for us is tremendous. Yes, it is. And it's everlasting. Yes. Amen. Praise be to God. In February of this year, <clears throat> I went back to my cardiologist and they fitted me, they had me wear what's called an event monitor for one week. Mm -hmm. Just to monitor my heart to, you know, to see what was happening. I've worn a monitor before, but only for 24 hours. But they, they wanted to see over the course of a week how my heart was operating and how things were going. So I turned it in and they sent it to a lab for it to be diagnosed. And on February 16th, I was at home um, preparing for a class that my wife and I were taking at, at church. And the, the, the scripture that I was reading that I was using to prepare was Psalm 118. We had to, this class, you had to read certain scriptures and then you had to make notes and make observations about the scripture. And while I was reading the psalm, the phone rang. Mm. Yeah. So I wasn't going to answer it because if I don't know the number most of the time, I hope we don't answer the phone to be frank. But I, I decided to answer the phone and as I picked it up, it was the, car, it was the doctor's office, the cardiologist's office. And they said, your results came back. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we'll see you in November. This was in February. And would you know the scripture that I was reading, Psalm 118, verse 17, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now tell me if that's not God. Hallelujah. I was halfway through, I was halfway through the, the verse when the phone rang. Amen. That was a direct word to God from God to me. Amen. That was a remote word. Amen. I tell you what, I couldn't contain myself. Mm -hmm. Amen. I just kept worshiping God, running around the house, and just, you know, just having a little party by myself. Amen. Amen. What did I say? God loves us. Yeah. He cares for us. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. He's interested in us, but he wants to work in our lives. He wants to accomplish something in my life. That's why he allowed That's right. something like that to happen. Amen. The third phase, as I mentioned, it, that we see in Psalm 27 is in, ver are in verses 13 and 14. The King James says, I had fainted mm -hmm. unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Yeah. And he shall strengthen our heart. Wait, yeah. I say on the Lord. What does it mean to faint? Mm -hmm. It means, number one, to grow weary. It means to give up. It means to lack courage. Mm -hmm. It means to lose heart. Amen. And then an offshoot of the word faint is faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. This means small-souled. In other words, not seeing the big picture, but being so consumed by our circumstances that we forget about the mighty right hand of our God. Another scripture that God used to encourage both myself and my wife was Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 where God says what? Fear not Amen. for I am your God. Be not dismayed for I am with you. I, am with you. I will help you. Yea, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will uphold you mm -hmm. with the right hand of Amen. my righteousness. Amen. That doesn't change. That hasn't changed. Even though my circumstances changed, mm -hmm. God has not changed. Right. He still has that mighty amen. right hand amen. that he uses to withhold, to uphold us. Amen. Amen. Whatever, if our situation is good, he, he upholds us. If our situation is bad, he upholds, he upholds us. Amen. It's his mighty right hand that never lets go of us. Praise the name of the Lord. So whatever our situation is, whatever we're going through, Hallelujah. David is saying here, faint not. Yeah. Don't give up. Amen. I know the circumstances are difficult and, and they're real. These, these things are not a figment of our imagination. 
Divorce is not a figment of our imagination. Financial difficulty is not a figment Amen. of our imagination. Amen. Amen. The problem on your job is not a figment of your imagination. Sorry. Praise be to God. Faint not. Amen. Don't grow weary. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then David Amen. said, I had faint, but what? Unless I had believed to yes. see yes. the goodness, goodness of the Lord yes. in the land of the living. Hallelujah. That's a word that we hear very often. As a matter of fact, we sang about it. You're a good, good father yes. today. Yes. God is very cliche. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. good. Amen. Yes. But what does it mean? From the Hebrew, the word good is a word spelled T-O-B. I'm not sure I pronounce it. Tob, Tob, I really don't know, to be frank. But it means favorable. Festive, pleasing, pleasant, means well, better, right, best. And then the, in the Greek, the word for good is agathos. Mm. And it means, definition of that is that which is beneficial yes. in, its, in its effect. The goodness of God is beneficial in the effect that it has on our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 God is essentially, absolutely and consummately good. He cannot change. God's goodness is revealed in his relation to and his treatment of us as his people. The whole universe, the work of God's creative power is good. God's self-revelation of his character, his will, his law, and his word are good. Amen. The gospel is it's good tidings. Yes. Praise God. It's good news. John chapter 3 verse 17 says, well, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, Amen. might be delivered, Amen. might be preserved. Here goes that word salvation again from Psalm chapter 27 verse 1. The way that God establishes and maintains relationships with us is good, as well as the gifts that he gives to us. And the providential care that he exercises Amen. over us. Christians are to prove God's goodness. Amen. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. We are to cleave to, the, to God's goodness. Romans chapter 12 verse 9. Mm -hmm. We are to do good unto all men. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. We are to work goodness. Romans chapter 2 verse 10. We are to follow after goodness. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.15. And we are to overcome evil with good. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Mm -hmm. David declared, I have fainted mm -hmm. unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. So when you go through your phases in life as they will, as they will come, right. if we live long enough, we will, through, we will experience mm -hmm. different phases in our lives. It won't always be Psalm 27, verses 1 through 2. Through six, there will come verses twelve, verses seven through twelve, rather, Amen. where we're crying out to God, where we're wondering, Amen. God, what's going on? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? Mm -hmm. Why is it that people are against me? Why is my family against me? Why are my co-workers against me? Yeah. Why are they telling lies about me? Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Don't faint. That's right. Amen. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be a small souled. Christian. Amen. Amen. Have that big perspective about That's the right. fact that the mighty Amen. right hand of God never changes. Mm -hmm. God is good but all the time. Mm -hmm. His goodness never changes. never changes. It doesn't matter what we go through. Our circumstances will change. Mm -hmm. We age. We get older. And, our, and things will happen in our lives but the goodness of God remains the same. The same. Day one, day two, Amen. day 60. Amen. It doesn't matter. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He's the same yesterday, Hallelujah. today, Hallelujah. and forever. He cannot change. Praise Amen. the name of the Amen. Lord. Amen. The goodness of God Amen. will last through our lifetime. Amen. And as we know that this life is just preparation for what comes next. Mm -hmm. So even in death, Jesus, you know what Jesus said? This, this is something that the Lord showed to me. Was uh, He said, and, and I woke up one morning and this scripture just came to me. Mm -hmm. out of, you know, out of the blue. Jesus says, Whosoever he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. But whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. Never. 
Amen. Never die. Amen. Christians don't die. All we do is sleep. That's right. That's right. So even in death, it's just a, a, a translation to a more glorious Hallelujah. existence, a more Amen. glorious time. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Isn't that enough Hallelujah. to make some noise about? Hallelujah. Isn't that enough Amen. to rejoice? No wonder Amen. David Hallelujah. in verse 6 says, I will rejoice. I will sing praises Amen. unto God. Amen. So when things aren't what we want them to be, when our souls are bowed down, when, we're dis yeah. when we are despondent, yeah. think of yeah. the goodness of God. Yeah. And Amen. the fact that His goodness never changes. Never changes. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen.